we bring lower back pain into the argument, you've again, I've kind of described this before because of all the different risks that come with it. So if you get lower back pain, so if you are assessed and questioned and it's understood that your back doesn't like compression or flexion extension or it has problems with shear forces, mainly the anterior shear force, then it's probably not a good idea or pain comes out through the facet joints or is irritated through the facet joints, then it's probably not a good idea to do back extensions. But there are also some other things that I look for with regards to um, using lower back. And essentially, it's three, it's three things. So does your pain get irritated during the exercise? Does your pain get irritated after doing the exercise? Or does your pain get irritated 24 to 48 hours after the exercise? So if you don't know, if you haven't been assessed for compression, flexion extension, um, and anterior shear forces, if you haven't been assessed for that, a simple way to understand to stop doing it is just very simply, does it cause me pain while I'm doing it? Does it cause me pain while uh, after I finish doing it? And is back pain enhanced in the in the preceding, uh, sorry, postseding, twenty four to forty eight hours? If it is, it's probably not a useful thing to be doing because you're constantly gonna have that. So we need to rethink what we're doing. So if you have been assessed, great. If you haven't been assessed, then those are probably three good um, um, sort of feedback times to think, okay, this doesn't seem like a useful thing to do. Although people are telling me to do it, it aggravates my pain during, after it, and in the preceding 24 to 48 hours. If that's the case, it's probably not a good idea to keep doing it. The next one, as I've talked about, we've got the the triggers. So is it compression, the trigger? So you do one thing and the compression's a problem. Flexion or extension? If you do one of them, are you getting pain? What we then get is um, the dosage of it. So we start to then bring in um, endurance. Now, endurance is multiple reps. So we have to understand, is endurance a problem? If pain comes on at rep 20, maybe we should be doing about 10. Again, to stay within that tolerance, because everyone has pain tolerance. This is another thing about the neutral spine argument and um, uh, spine flexion argument. Okay, I could go down and flex my spine, pick one thing up once and it not be a problem. But I could pick that same thing up 20 times or, you know, a repeated task of picking something up 20 times and my back's a problem. Again, neutral spine, endur endurance is the problem and the spine flexion. So if I keep my spine in neutral, I, I can lift it up 20 times. But everyone has their tolerances. So if I go down and pick something up once, okay, fine, I can get away with it. But if I do it repeated times, I'm not gonna get away with it. It's the same with back extensions. We have to understand that when we are choosing these exercises. Not only what is the trigger, is what are my tolerances for that as well. So it's very important that endurance is a part of it. Can I cope with one rep? Can I cope with 10 reps? Can I cope with 50 reps? We have to understand that. Then the other one is the range of movement. Can I cope with full flexion and full extension? Do I need to manage my um, movement within it? Again, I'm all I'm saying is it's an unnecessary exercise. There are plenty of other exercises where you can get the benefits of what back extensions give you, but with reduced risk. So certainly for people starting out, and certainly people with back pain, and specific types of back pain, it's probably useful just avoiding it for now. You may want to bring it in later, but again, there are other exercises that can do just as good job without the risk. So we have to understand all these different things with it. If we are talking about people without back pain, Again, that's another judgment call. 
because now we understand that w w um, we are putting unnecessary anterior shear forces on the spine. We're putting unnecessary forces through the vertebra. We're putting unnecessary forces through the facet joints. We're putting unnecessary forces through the uh, intervertebral discs. Um, potentially over time, and again that's important to remember, is that potentially over time that could cause us a problem because again most of back pain doesn't happen in one thing which is what I described. I can go down and pick up a box once, it's not going to cause me a problem, but if I do that 20 times it might cause me a problem. It depends on my tolerances. So what it comes down to is the individual knowing themselves or the coach or the trainer in knowing the individual well enough to know that they can cope with one rep of it. They can cope with 50 reps of it. They can cope with doing just once a training session or one, once a week within a wider training session. Or they can cope with doing it three times a week. All of that has to be understood. They don't get aggravated during the exercise. They don't get aggravated during um, immediately after. They don't get aggravated during the next 24 to 48 hours. So again, all these different things need to be understood. And this isn't just for back extensions. This is for multiple exercises. We're just using back extensions as the example because it's such a um, um, an interested in topic. There are many people that comment on this agreeing with me. There are many people on here that disagree with me about this. And that's absolutely fine. Um, again, from all the bits that I've read and all the questions that I've been answered, I haven't found anything that's, that's enough to make me doubt what I've been saying because I seem to be one of the few people that look at it in very specific contexts and go into deeper detail about the specifics of the individual, not necessarily about the exercise, but the individual and what are their tolerances, um, what are their pain patterns, so on and so forth, what are their strength levels, all of this type of stuff. And then you can make a better judgment on it. But again, I haven't found, there hasn't been anyone that's questioned me that's been convincing enough or the the question hasn't been well constructed enough to doubt what I'm sharing and to doubt my understanding of what the back extension can do to someone but the determining factor is the individual so it's all well and good saying back extensions don't do this and back extensions don't do that a lot of what I'm saying is, yeah, but there's an individual within this that can't cope with X or can't cope with Y. So why are you giving them an exercise that does X and that does Y? So these, all these different things need to be understood about exercise selections. Because how I've always thought about it is I'm not trying to fit a person to the exercise. I'm trying to fit an exercise to the person. That's always been my slant on selecting exercises is what's the most suitable exercise for them in their condition. The only difference with me is I know more variables about exercises and I know more components about the individual. Because yes, they may need to get stronger. Okay, well back extensions might seem like a good idea for that. But their spine doesn't like this or we're already doing this exercise or their spine doesn't like that or their spine can't cope with this or it has a tolerance of that which then makes me think, well, it's probably not necessary. I can get what I need out of the lower back with this exercise or that exercise, so I don't need that one. And again, it just comes down to me not needing the exercise. So it just seems unnecessary for more people to do it. So I can go on and on and on about this, but I shan't. I shall digress, come back and just say, again, as I've mentioned, hopefully this has been helpful for you. Hopefully it's given you a better idea of um, the back extension and what it can do and the individuals that maybe should and shouldn't be doing it or could and couldn't be doing it. Um, so yes, many thanks for watching. If you have uh, enjoyed the content, hit the like button. If um, you want to watch more videos like this, hit the subscribe button. If you've got any comments or questions, leave in the comment section below. And if you've learned something new, please do hit the thanks button. And um, yes, many thanks for watching. My name is Chris. I'll speak to you in the next tutorial.